My name is Rick Rosenberger. I'm the curator here at the Harmony Museum. And today we're going to uh, talk about the uh, five rifles you see behind me. They were made here in Harmony in the second half of the 19th century by Charles Flowers. He was our resident gunsmith. He lived here and worked over on Wood Street in Harmony. He moved here in the late 1840s, and by 1850, he's listed in the census as a coal miner. From then on, uh, he's uh, recorded as a gunsmith, and he worked until his death in 1897. Made quite a few rifles. We see them in town and uh, at the gun show, which we hold here. And he was a very prolific maker, and he was uh, quite a good maker, considering the late time in which he worked. Now, the American long rifle uh, was developed in eastern Pennsylvania, and it's commonly called the Kentucky rifle. We had immigrant gunsmiths coming from Germany and Central Europe into eastern Pennsylvania, and they were familiar with the European rifle. Rifle meaning the spiral grooves cut inside the bore of the gun and uh, the ball, the projectile, was fitted tight to the spiral groove so that when the gun was fired, the ball rotated on its axis like a uh, gyroscope and stabilizing it in flight, and they were exceedingly accurate. The European gun, as the uh, immigrants knew it, wasn't satisfactory to the hunters here. That gun, called a Jaeger, was developed to hunt boar. Wild boar in Europe uh, took a large ball and a heavy potter charge to stop. Our, here we didn't need that. Our hunters wanted a smaller caliber. And they wanted it particularly because it was uh, cheaper to operate. Now the American long rifle is composed of three basic parts, lock, stock, and barrel. The lock was a mechanism which ignited by a hammer blow the percussion cap. The stock, usually made from curly maple or tiger maple, was favored above all woods for gun stocks, for Kentucky rifle gun stocks, because it didn't split well. It was sound even though it was very thin in many areas. This was good, strong wood to use. And the barrel is the most important thing of anything. From the very beginning, Gun barrel making was a distinct trade. Whenever they bought barrels, the barrel was not rifled. It was the job of the gunsmith to cut those grooves in that inside of that barrel. And that was a very important feature on the guns. We have the cutting tool right here. A single tooth cutting tool and laid into wood, which is drawn through the barrel by the machine. This would be lubricated by an apprentice or the helper to the man that's doing the rifling and then pulled through the machine as it cuts the groove in the barrel. Very time consuming process would take six to eight hours for two men to rifle a barrel. And Charles Flowers was very good at it. The reason we know he was so good at it is that we have an antique gun show we hold here uh, once a year in August. And we've seen in excess of 60 of his rifles come into the door here. Uh, most of them held in family and descendants of the original gun owners who bought the guns from Charles Flowers. One of the other tricks they used was to reduce the size of the ball about five to ten thousandths of an inch from the, from the rifling grooves and, and cover the ball with a gasket, a patch that they wrapped around. It was lubricated usually with tallow, wrapped around the ball. And, and set down tight on the powder charge inside the chamber. So by reducing the size of the projectile and lengthening the barrel in order to burn more powder, they developed a new weapon, very similar to that gun. This one is covered with 26 German silver inlays. Even the patchbox special order to German silver. In order to transport and keep clean the patch and the grease, the gunsmiths carved a compartment in the buttstock of the gun and covered it with a brass hinged door. Collectors today call that a patch box. 
It's unique, it's made from sheet brass, and each gun maker had his own style. Here we have one of Charles's earliest guns. It has a full patch box on it. Even though he'd started to work in a late period, uh, some people preferred this style. And the, the compartment shows very little use, but there are traces of verdigris in there from the reaction with the brass. The side panels on the, on the box are nicely engraved, and so is the finial with the wood showing through. The style of rifle that developed in Western Pennsylvania was a blending of the Virginia style and the uh, Eastern Pennsylvania style, principally the Lancaster style, since uh, several of the earliest gunsmiths came from Lancaster, which was a gun making center in the uh, 1700s. When Charles Flowers saw, saw what uh, guns were here, he readily accepted that style and carried it through uh, his uh, period of employment, which was considerably longer, and he was able to purchase parts that uh, previous makers had to manufacture for themselves. And Pittsburgh was a center for uh, gun making, and uh, his rifles are similar to theirs, but uh, the refinements uh, can easily be identified. We have a nice collection here, come and see it.